one about communists being stuck in the White House now. And I don't say that Washington's been took over by the Reds. <laughs> and I don't say that all the wealth of the country is in the hands of the Jews. I like the Jews. And I'm a friend of the niggers. But I do say this, however. The world that I knew is gone. Gone. Gone with the wind. You see, my pockets are full of watches which tell me that my time's just about over. All them pigs that were slaughtered, the carcasses dumped in the river... Farmers receiving payments to not to grow corn and wheat and not to plant cotton. All these alphabet letters springing up all about me, meaning unknown to my generation. The lack of respect, the rudeness, the newspapers full of strange items, and the terrible, fast, dark events of the world. Toward what, where, why? Well, I don't pretend to have any knowledge now. I only say this and I say this, but I don't understand what's happened. I'm one of them monsters, you see, reproduced in the museums out of the dark old ages, the, 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 the giant reptiles, the, 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 the dino, whatever you call them. But I do, do know this, and I state it without any shame, initiative, self-reliance, independence of character, the old sterling qualities that distinguish one man from another, the clay from the potter and the potter from the clay are now... Uh, how does the old song go? Uh, gone with the, gone with, gone with the roses of yesterday. I belong to tradition. I'm a legend from one end of the Delta to the other. From the Peabody Hotel in Memphis to Catfish Road in Vicksburg, Mr. Charlie, Mr. Charlie, who knows you? What do you represent? A lion of goods of doubtful value. Get out of my room. I'd rather play solitaire than poker with men who are no more solid characters than the jacks in the deck. What you shouting about, Mr. Joey? Well, I'll lose my temper sometime, nigga. Yes, sir. You remember what it used to be? Yes, sir. Uh, I used to come to this town like a conquering hero. Oh, my God, nigga, they all but laid out the red carpet in my feet. Ain't that so? That is so, Mr. Joey. Well, this room was like a throne room. My samples laid out over here on green velvet. And the ceiling fan goer now broken. And over there, the bowl and the pitcher put away and the, the tabletop loaded with liquor, huh? And in and out of my room from the time I arrived to the time I left, the men of the road who knew me and to whom I stood for things commanding respect. Poker, hilarity, shouting, laughing. <laughs> Where have they all gone? Where have you all crowded? Everyone we knew, Mr. Charlie, it's mighty late in the day. It ain't even late in the day anymore, nigga. It's night. Yes, it's night, Mr. Charlie. For how many years have you been taking snuff? Ever since I was 16. Why do you take it? Because it's good for the eyesight. You think it's a good habit, do you? Yes, for the eyesight. I went to and blind once. And I couldn't see my mother or nobody. And I got home the best way I could from Mill. And after that, Mother said, you stop on the sofa and I'll get you something that will bring your eyesight back. I never believed her. Well, she went off, of course, being 16, I kicked up a fuss about it. The next morning I was at work. How much snuff do you take in a week? Well, Jared and I take about an ounce or ounce and a quarter. Do you always carry this with you? Oh, yes. I don't want to go away to take it. Yes, I take it everywhere. And it's, it's a habit you'd recommend, would you? It is a habit that I recommend. People reckon it's a dirty habit, but you can be clean with anything. I don't believe in dirty habits. Gentlemen no more than smoking fags. Not so much, but I don't believe in smoking fags. That's right. <laughs> Tell me another thing while I'm here. Do you ever wish you had the electricity instead of oil? No, lamps? I don't. Why is that, Dorcas? Because my, uh, I don't believe in electric. God Almighty g gave the oil, but he didn't give the electric. Well, so you're straight. And on the whole, you don't approve of these newfangled things. No, do I don't. No, I don't. None of it. Well, Mr. Juggins, I believe you take snuff. Well, I really do. Now, and tell you, Mrs. Turner, I've always found myself in jolly good health. And as soon as you've got a cold and come in, if you take plenty of snuff in a decent way, you find yourself more healthier than those who do not take snuff. Because, Mrs. Turner, now you understand that snuff 
is made from the Puritan tobacco plant. And they just say that smoking cigarettes, you know, Mrs. Turner, they cause cancers. But smoking do not cause cancers. Because older you get or younger, you've always got some ailment in your inside which we do not know nothing at all about. But I always found out my own self that if you take snuff, I know it is awful price. Have you taken snuff all your life, George? Well, I have took snuff ever since I married Dorcas, and that's uh, and that's forty-five years. years come this August. What made you take it up? Because I found myself, after all, that cured my cold in the first place. Now you understand, it don't matter where you are, Mrs. Turner, I'm speaking to you now, and you're speaking to me. It don't matter if you're inside or outside, there is a surging germ going about the air. You understand that? Well, you're bound to breathe that German into you, don't matter if you're inside or, or outside. But if you've got something behind you to give you more spirit and give you more kick and just put my ideas up if I was you and get and take snuff yourself, Mr. Turner, you'll find it a lot better off. <laughs>